What's next? Ah, the sweet anticipation of two small, simple words, to which I respond, desiring more. The light principle. Desire is a wish, a want, an aspiration. We've all felt desire at some point in our lives. Desire is a strong feeling of wanting something on a deeper level. When I was young, my desires were quite simple. And I have to admit that some haven't changed today. <laughs> Except, thankfully, the haircut. <laughs> Yet, these next, probably the, the biggest desire I have today is that these next 40 years of my life be just as full of these five principles as the last 40 have been. I hope to connect at a deeper level with my own light and with the light of those around me. And to always ask this one simple question. When I show up as my best self, and I commit to showing up as my best self, what does that look like? Well, it looks like light. This is the light principle. When we live in abundance, it is only because we give more than we focus on receiving. The more we give away, the more our hearts and souls can create. Abundance, therefore, becomes our legacy. Abundance becomes who we are, not what we are. L is for love. The very first five words I came up with for my blog site came after a conversation with a professional athlete who's a baseball player. And he was on his way to his first spring training game that year. And he called me and he said, Jen, I need a little inspiration. He happened to be a client of mine at the time. And I said, one question, why do you play? And he said, and I could hear the emotion coming through the phone, because I love it. And from there, for love of the game became our mantra. When you love what you do, and you do what you love, you live on purpose. Life has a much fuller meaning. Yet life is not without difficulties. The Tao Te Ching tells us to end all conflict with love. So in the midst of anger, in the midst of hurt, in the midst of disappointment, I always ask the question, what would love look like here? How can I bring love to this situation, to this person, to this place, to this moment? When we surround ourselves with people and places and things that we love, we become more whole. When we love fully, we live fully. There is no greater peace and there is no greater sense of belonging in these moments. Life, therefore, is a necessity. Life, love, happiness is the foundation for all else. I is for integrity. Integrity is when our thoughts, our words, and our actions all match. Yet we don't often talk about integrity without bringing up the word character. And the definition of character we've heard so many times is who you are and what you do when no one's watching. Well, I like to add something to that. And I like to say that integrity and character is who you are and what you do when no one's watching and when everyone's watching. Because they can be two different people, can't they? Or perhaps we rely on the definitions from two different seven-year-olds. The first came at the University of Tennessee. Each December, I fly to Knoxville, and I speak about the mental game of softball at their Christmas camp. And this camp brings in about 450 kids. They break up these groups into 12 sessions by age, six on Saturday, six on Sunday. 
and I speak for an hour each. So you can imagine by the end of Sunday, I have no idea what I'm talking about, nor do I know what my name is anymore. And by the time I get on the plane, forget it. So I was being teased this one year about how I always end up having the youngest kids at the end of the day, on the second day. And at lunch, these coaches were teasing me, and they said, how are you going to talk about the mental game with seven-year-olds at the end of the second day, where you have to sit them in chairs after they've been running around, good luck to you. And I said, oh, it'll be fine. And as I'm walking back after lunch by myself, I'm thinking, how am I going to talk to seven-year-olds about the mental game? All right, you get it. So they came in and they sat down, and I have no idea what they did to them in the other room, but they were perfect. They sat, ready to go. They were like the sponges that they are. And I thought, all right, let's go. So I started in on my five C's of a mental game warrior program, and the first C happens to be the word character. So I asked, <clears throat> what is character? Front row, second seat. She was the smallest girl in the room. She couldn't even touch the ground. Her feet just kind of dangled off the chair. And with these big eyes, she raised her hand slowly. And I walked over to her and I said, OK, tell us, what does character mean? And she put her hand right back down. Her eyes got big. And I thought, I'd better move to plan B because I'm about to make this little girl cry. But with this sweet, soft, gentle little voice, she looked up at me with these big eyes and she said, when you see a piece of trash, you pick it up. And I said, yes, 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 <laughs> that's character. See, I've always been a believer in the phrase, be a student always and a teacher as fast as you can. And that day, that seven-year-old was my teacher and I was her student. And then fast forward to just a couple months ago, and I was at the elementary school, after school, Believe and Achieve program at my local YMCA. This was quite different. I walked in the room, of course it was after school, these kids had been pent up all day, and it was probably the loudest place I have ever heard in my entire life. And I thought, I have no idea even where the front of the room is because these kids are running all over the place. And I knew it was going to be a challenge that day to even just get them all facing in the same direction, let alone quiet enough to listen. So I just started talking, loudly. <laughs> and the funny thing is they started listening. And I started with, what is character? And the little girl right in front of me raises her hand wildly, and she said, it's a role in a movie. I said, OK. All right, good. And I'm thinking really quickly, how am I going to make this go in the right direction? So I better ask this a different way. So I said, OK, well, what does it mean when I say good character? Little girl over here in the red coat to my right raises her hand. And she said, the Little Mermaid. <clears throat> so we were going in that direction, and I just needed to go with it. So I said, okay, all right, fine, The Little Mermaid. Why? And she said, because The Little Mermaid was good. And she did the right things, and she was nice, and she was kind to others. And in my head in that moment, I realized, mission accomplished. They got it. They got it. So what does it look like? when I show up with integrity and character, when I am my best self? Well, maybe it looks like picking up trash with The Little Mermaid. G is for gratitude. I started practicing gratitude years ago when I began keeping a gratitude journal. I would write down every day things that I was thankful for, and I'll tell you, Quite honestly, some days were harder than others. And yet on those really tough days, those bad days that we all have, I at least forced myself to write down the words, thank you. Two small, simple words with powerful meaning. And on those days when I was struggling, I realized I stopped asking for things. 
And as soon as I stopped asking for things, I started to just say, thank you for blessing me with abundance. See, we can come from an abundance mindset or we can have a lack mentality. It is a choice. I'm sure we're all familiar with the quote from the book Rose Garden. I used to complain about having no shoes until I met a man who had no feet. Gratitude, therefore, is a choice. Gratitude is something that we decide which way it goes. Gratitude is about perspective. We get what we focus on. We have those bad days where we burnt the toast, we spilled the coffee, we broke our favorite mug, we stepped on the dog, we put a hole in our shirt, and we haven't even left the house yet. And you're thinking to yourself, that was this morning. And then we say to ourselves, could this day get any worse? Oh, yeah, it can. But here's the funny thing. What happens in those moments is we step over and we climb over and we crush and we kick under the rug all of the positive things that just happened. Because, oh no, this is a bad day. I don't have time for those things today. We don't choose to see them. I know we get what we focus on. When I drove off the lot after buying my 2009 silver Nissan Murano, in my 14 minute drive home, I saw five other silver Nissan Muranos. And I thought to myself, how crazy is it that everyone else bought the same car as me on the same day. That's pretty wild. <laughs> and I laughed to myself and said, you just weren't looking for it yesterday. We get what we focus on. And when we focus on that in that lack mentality, it's like handing you a rose and saying, here, I got you this. But be careful, it's really sharp. Don't cut yourself, it hurts. When we only ever hold the stem, we lose the rose's beauty. So when I show up as my best self, I'm carrying three dozen roses. H is for honor. Honor as a noun is a high regard or a high esteem. Honor as a verb is to fulfill an obligation or a commitment. Interesting because I think they both apply when it comes to ourselves. See, we're often taught at a young age to honor our father and mother, to honor our sisters and brothers, to honor those who go before us, to honor those who fight for our freedoms every day, to honor our country, to honor each other. Yet, when were we ever really taught to honor ourselves? See, I don't think there's a class in school that teaches that, and I don't think that there's any room on any report card to even get in it. We're taught to honor others. We're not taught to honor ourselves. So when we can sit in that quiet and that silence and that solitude alone and like the company we keep, when we can look in the mirror and see those eyes looking back at us without judgment, without expectation or excuse, and love and accept, that person, that is truly honoring ourselves. And I'll tell you, for me, it's a work in progress. So what does it look like when I show up as my best self in honor? Well, I want it to look like peace in the midst of it all, in the midst of chaos, serenity. I want it to look like me. T, then, is for truth. Sometimes the truth that we tell ourselves and the truth that we believe are not really the truth at all. Since the age of seven, I have wanted to write a book. And for so long, I kept telling myself this story. You can't write a book. Who are you to write a book? Nobody knows you. It doesn't matter if you ever write a book. No one will ever read it. Who cares? And then I kept hearing that quote by Dr. Wayne Dyer, don't die with your music still inside you. And I realized on September 28th, 2012, I had a whole symphony to write, and a symphony that, symphony that needed to be played and heard. And on that day, I signed an agreement with the publishing company. And on December 17th, 2012, 
My book was on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and shortly thereafter on my website and in my own hands. I went from I can't to I did in three months. Why? Because I changed my story. I rewrote my story. And there was another story that I was believing for so long, and that's that I can't run. I am not a runner. <laughs> I just don't like it. And perhaps that was the problem. See, we often don't like the things we're not good at, right? So for so long, I told myself, I cannot run more than a mile. And in September of 2013, I ran my first 5K. And I finished it. And notice I said my first, because I do believe that there are more to come. Just like the books, just like the truths that I introduce myself to today, the real truth. So what does it look like when I show up as my best self, speaking my truth, authentic as I am? Well, it looks like this. So what's next is what's now. And what's now is living by the light principle today, not tomorrow or next week or next year, but right now. Because the present is all we will ever have. Won't you join me? Because we are not meant to do this alone. Thank you. <laughs>